The secretary of the Serbian Ministry of Justice said his organization amassed billions of dollars in the course of its operations. He remained under the radar for many, many years, until he made one mistake, a mistake that would go on to haunt him for years on end. It ultimately led to him making a drastic decision. This is the story of Darko Saric. Darko Saric, also dubbed as the Balkan Cocaine King, was born on October the 21st, 1970 in Montenegro. However, he also holds the Serbian citizenship. As a young boy, he was once arrested for stealing salami and chocolate ice cream. But not much more is known about his younger years. Darko has always managed to operate under the radar due to his strong connections with powerful Montenegrin and Serbian officials, as well as businessmen. Investigators knew about his involvement in the drug trade since 2005, but it was not until 2008 that they started to take him more serious and intensified their search. They slowly but surely started realizing that Darko wasn't just a beginner. Shortly after realizing this, they started to dedicate an entire team to observe and map out his organization. From the early 2000s, Darko, together with his associates, brought in shipment after shipment into West Europe from South America. The success rates of his shipments were very high due to his extensive network and well thought out smuggling routes. During the years, the shipments got increasingly bigger. Now it was time to hit the jackpot. Darko scheduled a shipment of over 2,000 kilos from Uruguay to Western Europe. After meticulously planning the shipment, their operation started in October 2009. Step one was to fill a British flagged yacht with the 2,000 kilos in a smaller port in Uruguay. Once that succeeded, it was set to leave towards the port of Santiago Vasquez, west of Montevideo, Uruguay's capital. In this port, the 2,000 kilos would be loaded off the yacht and loaded onto a larger cargo ship that would set sail towards Western Europe. Little did they know that the shipment was being closely observed. Police had gotten word of the shipment and decided to take action. As several men were moving the kilos of coke onto the cargo ship, they were surprised by a Uruguayan police force. A few managed to flee, yet a Uruguayan man and a Croatian man were arrested on the spot. This seizure led to more arrests in Uruguay and Serbia as well. Soon after this massive seizure of coke and all these arrests, police concluded that there was one mastermind behind this all. It had to be Darko Saric, the head of a highly organized Balkan crime group, as officials referred to him. Upon further investigation, many other huge quantities of coke shipped from Uruguay, Argentina, and Brazil to Europe could be linked to Darko and his organization. Slobodan Homen, the secretary of the Serbian Ministry of Justice, said Darko's organization amassed billions of dollars in the course of its operations. Darko would invest his profits mainly in Serbia by getting into real estate, cafes, restaurants, nightclubs, and multiple companies. All these businesses and ventures allowed Darko to portray himself as a successful businessman. Despite having made so much money, Darko had never put himself in the spotlight. Yes, he lived in luxury, but he did not need everyone to know about it. He was well aware that getting attention could only backfire on him. The seas to shipment led to increased attention for law enforcement all over the world though. Darko heard about him being a prime suspect and decided to go into hiding and now would live a life on the run. In January 2010, Serbia officially issued an international arrest warrant for him. The hunt was on and prosecutors immediately went in hard, freezing assets as well as seizing goods. Furthermore, they did not just go after Darko, they went after every single person in his organization, as well as his family members that profited from his illicit gains. Several months after the international arrest warrant, Serbian police seized many items, houses and buildings. They started off by putting all the items up for auction first on the 8th of June. From TVs to baby cribs to jacuzzis to furniture, everything had to be sold. Although the items were not photographed up front for safety reasons according to the police, they did seem to be very happy and proud to be able to sell these items, almost as a humiliation to Darko, to show that they were putting his personal belongings up for auction. With Darko being untraceable, law enforcement went after his associates and those close to him. In mid-November 2010, they managed to arrest Darko's brother, Dusko, in Montenegro. Dusko was also a wanted man in Italy, where he was charged for smuggling drugs into the country for the organization of his brother. They hoped that his arrest could lead to his brother. 
Dusko, however, remained tight-lipped and did not say a word about his brother. On the 27th of April, Bosnian police proudly announced that they had arrested one of Darko's closest and most important associates, Zoran Kopic. According to them, Zoran laundered at least 20 million euros for Darko through the purchase of hotels and farms. He was involved in orchestrating shipments as well. After his arrest, they seized 15 million euros worth of properties tied to Zoran and expected to find out about many more. After his brother Darko lost another important associate, it most likely annoyed Darko greatly as he saw law enforcement booking progress and closing in on him. Despite these arrests, it remained silent around Darko. Law enforcement knew he was moving across countries and never stayed long in one place. They expected him to hide out in the Balkans where he was familiar, or in South America under protection of his business partners there. With that in mind, it was all the more surprising that on the 3rd of February 2012, news broke that Darko was spotted in South Africa. The South African Office for Combating Organized Crime said they had located a man believed to be Darko after obtaining information from an informant. They were in contact with Interpol to confirm whether it was him or not. He reportedly lived under a pseudonym in the province of Gauteng, which contains the cities of Pretoria and Johannesburg. Here is where he allegedly was protected by a local organized crime group and corrupt officials, according to a South African newspaper. After this news broke, it remained silent. No arrests, no official confirmation whether Darko was in the country or not. Nothing. Was he even there? Or was this due to the help of the organized crime group and corrupt officials? I guess we'll never know for sure. Years went by, yet without a sign. Many of his associates had been arrested as a result of ongoing investigations. However, the man they wanted the most was nowhere to be found. Then, on the 18th of March 2014, something truly unbelievable happened. What's a better feeling for law enforcement than your most wanted target turning himself in? I can't really think of anything else. Definitely let me know in the comments if you can think of something. Because instead of staying on the run, Darko made the drastic decision to turn himself in. It was totally unexpected as he was already on the run for four years. It goes to show that life on the run is never easy, even when you have so much money. Darko must have known that law enforcement was seriously closing in on him. They knew he moved between four countries in South America and it was only a matter of time before they would get him. Darko sent the Serbian Minister of Justice, Nikola Selakovic, a request for contact. Afterward, Darko said that he wanted to avoid a serious confrontation between police and the organizations that protected him in South America. He did not set any conditions. Before surrendering, he just wanted to see his wife, his children, and his lawyer. That was all. Other than that, he was ready to undergo whatever would be thrown his way. Darko flew to Montenegro, where he met with his wife, children, and lawyer for half an hour as requested. After which, he flew to Serbia accompanied by police, where he was taken into custody. Darko looked healthy and tanned while being all smiles. He did not really seem impressed by anything, nor the possibility of a long jail sentence ahead of him. Little did he know that his arrest would have serious implications for the entirety of the Balkan. A new group would emerge to take his place. This group would go on to cause mayhem throughout the entire world. More on this in a separate mini-series I'm working on. Stay tuned, it's coming soon and it will be worth it. In mid-July 2015, Darko heard prosecutors demanding a sentence of 20 years in prison against him for smuggling large quantities of coke from South America into Europe. Darko pleaded not guilty, claiming that there was no evidence for the charges that he organized coke smuggling from Latin America. He also called the process politically motivated. His lawyer, Radoslav Bakovic, said he would certainly appeal the verdict. What would follow was a trial full of postponements because of absent lawyers and medical issues. On the 27th of November 2017, the president of the Belgrade court reassigned one of the judges from the trial chamber in the case, which meant that it had to start all over again. The trial started taking so long, that several cases where Darko was being prosecuted for got expired and became outdated. This meant that he no longer could be sentenced for this. State prosecutor Sasha Ivanich said the constant obstructions in the case were directed only towards one goal, the release of Saric from custody. In December 2018, Darko was finally sentenced to 15 years in prison for smuggling nearly 6,000 kilos of coke from South America. Darko's defense requested revocation of the final verdict two years later in December 2020, and as a total shock, the court agreed and said the two judges were biased, leading to an unfair trial. And just like that, seven years after he turned himself in, Darko was released from prison and placed under house arrest a year later, in December 2021. 
News reports called the decision scandalous because it concerned only a formal mistake and not the essence of the case. Whatever their opinion about it was, Darko sat comfortable in his wife's villa in Belgrade. It did not last long though. In April 2022, Darko was arrested again. This time, prosecutors also added evidence of encrypted messages Darko allegedly sent from jail. While in jail, Darko kept his business running and even went as far as making a plan to take out Nibosya Yoksovic, an associate turned witness, in one of the ongoing processes against him. He also tried to discredit him as a witness and paid police officers to tamper with evidence to divert accusations against him and his closest associates. As of September 2023, nine years after him surrendering himself, the soap is still not finished. Darko's defense tried to discredit the hack PGP messages, calling it espionage. The court, however, decided it will be lawful evidence to use in the case. We will have to see how much time Darko will have to serve when the final verdict is finally given. For now, it will most likely be another long and drawn out process. I will keep you updated. As I mentioned earlier, Darko's arrest had serious implications for the entire Balkan region. I'm working very hard on a miniseries to cover this subject, and I guarantee you it will be my best work so far. As always, please leave a like, a comment sharing your thoughts, and be sure to subscribe if you have not already. See you in the next one.